Kestra released a feature where you can build custom applications that connect to your backend automation flows. So in this video, we're gonna walk through step-by-step -step how to build a data automation workflow application in Kestra. This automation allows a user to submit a request for data like employee or product data and automatically have it available for download within the app. Now, what I like about this particular automation is that it saves you time by automating data downloads. Your coworkers don't have to IM you on the side asking for data. They can just access an app and request for the data automatically. So first we're gonna go over how to set up the flow itself. Then we're gonna go over how to build the app and then finally talk about how they connect to each other and how to build the entire workflow automation. Now, first we need to actually log into Kestra and it's gonna look something like this. I will link it below in the description as well. And you're gonna to go to flows. This is the first thing we need to do in order to create our custom workflow data automation. Essentially, you need to create a flow first and this is gonna act as our backend of the application. Luckily, Kestra actually has a ton of examples on their GitHub, so we just need to go to their GitHub and grab the example that we're pulling from. So I will link this again in the description, but you're gonna go to flows under here in the file folders, and then we're going to grab this get data flow. So we just have to grab and copy this. So you can just click copy raw file and it will copy it to your clipboard and then we're gonna bring it into our flow in our workspace in Kestra. So if we go back to Kestra and under flows, go ahead and click create, and then we're going to replace this with the code we just copied. So you're just gonna control V, just copy it right in here. The only thing that you're gonna to need to watch out for is this ID up here. So if you've played around with some of these, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a unique ID name. And so I'm gonna go ahead and change this ID. So just to clarify, this is what we're looking at. This is the get data. I'm just gonna add like YouTube at the bottom or on the sides so that way it's unique. And then we're gonna go ahead and click save. Then you will get this successfully saved notification. And that's key because you wanna make sure that this is saved before we go and pull the code for the app. Now we will come back to this and walk through it step by step, but I wanna go grab the code for the application and bring that in and connect them before I walk through everything. We're back in GitHub, so now we need to go and find the code for the app that we want to build. And it's gonna to connect to the flow itself. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to find the app. So we can close out of the flows and go to apps and find the get data application. So request data form is the one we're looking for. And we can tell because the flow ID right here will say get data, which is exactly what we're looking for. That's the flow that we just made, except for I called mine get data YouTube. So we're gonna go ahead and click this to copy it into our clipboard. And then we're gonna paste it into the app section of Kestra. So separately from where we put it with the flows. And I'll show you how to do that. Now that we have that code copied, we're going to go into the apps and paste it in there. So we are in flows, right? So this is the get data YouTube flow that we just created. So we need to actually go down to apps and then go up here and click create. And you're gonna override this code. So we're gonna press control A and then control V to paste this code in here, the one that we just grabbed from GitHub. Now, the only thing that we need to do is under flow ID, remember we added that underscore YouTube. So we need to add that back. So we're gonna add YouTube and then go ahead and save. Now everything should be connected because we just added that flow ID. So we can go up here into view app and see what the application looks like. So if we go ahead and click view app, we should see an application and it will be connected to that back end flow as well. So you can see it does work, it's very nice, and this would be the request data form. And now let's walk through kind of how it all works together. Now that we just copied and we kind of cheated a little bit, now we can start understanding how to customize this and how it actually works. How this application works is people can come in here and request data. So they go to this app, they select the data they want and the date and they click submit, again, saving you time so they're not constantly asking people how to get data, they just have an app. So how this app is set up is we can read in the code editor here. Now it looks a little overwhelming at first, but each block basically represents a piece of the application. So in the first kind of couple lines, this is all just app kind of properties and metadata. 
So you can kind of ignore that as far as the layout of the application goes. And so let's get into the layout section, which is actually what the app is built out of. The first thing you'll notice is actually this on section. There's on open, there's on running, there's on success. So those are three different states of the app. This is on open, right? Because this application is open. So if it were on running, that would be after I click submit, then that looks slightly different than what it looks like when you're originally working, when the user's interacting with it. And lastly, on success, when it does successfully pull the data and show it to you, that's gonna look different on the application because you want to give them the data. So each kind of subset, and we'll walk through all of them, shows you a different visual of the application depending on what stage you're in. So let's start with on open. So on open here, we have blocks, right? This one is a content block that is in markdown. We can tell because there's a bunch of hashtags and it also says markdown here. So this says request data and then it says select the data set you want to download, right? So select the data set you want to download. That corresponds to this right here, right? And request data is a heading to and it's right above that. So you can kind of see how it works. Like there's the request data, there's that little um, text and then we have two little um, situations here, right? We have a create execution form and we have another create execution button. So we know that this is the button, it says submit. So this right here represents the button and this guy right here, that's this section, will represent this whole form, right? The select data to download customers, start date for your data set, all this. So this whole section will be that line of code right there. So you can kind of see how it's set up. Now, if I were to change this to get data, right? So if I go ahead and click that, then I can go ahead and, uh, and save it. And then I can refresh and it should say get data. So you can kind of see how you can customize it. So you can change the name, you can change this, and then you have your form as well. Now you might be wondering where did these drop down inputs come from, right? Customers, employees, products. I don't see that here. I just see this create execution form. So where does that come from? Now that's actually coming from the flow itself. Now remember the back end is going to be the flow. So if you want to see that, we can take a peek at that, but we have to go to the flows. Right now we're in the app section of Kestra. So to take a look at that, we're actually going to expand this menu here go to flows, go to our get data YouTube flow, double click that, oops, um, go ahead and click editor. And then you can see in the flow right here, we have our inputs, here's the data and here's the start date, right? So this is gonna be your customers, employees, products, stores, that's that drop down. So if we add, let's say projects here, click save and then refresh your app, you'll see projects as an option. So that's kind of where the inputs are coming from. And then same thing with the date, right? We could change this to a 2025, 02, to, you know, one of the dates. That's actually more realistic. Go ahead and press save, refresh your app, and then there's the date field. So that's how it kind of plays with the flow and app and how they integrate together. So let's go ahead and go back to the app editor so we can go through the next couple of stages. So we're back in the app editor and this is what it looks like, right? So we just went over the open section, right? Pretty simple. Now let's go into the running section, right? On running. So this is when you actually go to select stuff. So let's go ahead and select customers and click the date and click get data. This is what it looks like, right? It says fetching your data at the top, right? So fetching your data, that matches, right? Don't close this window. You can see that that's what that shows. And then you have some logs and then a cancel request button. So then we're going to, now that it's been successful, now it's going on to on success and this so that, that on running was a short little snip of what it looked like when it was in the running phase. Now you're on success. So now we can kind of go over what the app looks like, right? It looks slightly different than what it looks like on running and when it's on open. So now we can take a look at what it looks like on success. So you can see it's a slightly different layout, right? So if we take a look here, you can see this section over here, 
request processed successfully, request processed successfully, right? So this is going to match that, right? You requested the following data set, same. Then you're gonna have this input section, right? So this is gonna be your data is available for download. That's this section, the alert. And this up here would be your input of the downloaded data, right? And then we have an outputs right here. So see this outputs? That is this whole section, right? So this is actually connected to the outputs in the flow. That's why you're able to download. So we can click preview and see what the data looks like. So you can see a preview of the data, which is nice. You can also download. So if I'm a user, use, so like this would be the user requesting for the data. They can go ahead and click download and they can download the data as well. So you can see it downloaded as a file. So there's a bunch of different options, but that is actually in this output section, which is connected to your flow. So we can go ahead and look back at the flow and see the outputs. Now we're back in the flow and you can see this right here is your output section. So this is what it is extracting. This is what it's providing the application so that you can press download. So outputs matches the output section in the application. And that was the output section, right? So I'm back in the app editor. That's the output. So we saw that back in the flows. So that's what the dot outputs is. That would be this whole section right here underneath the alert and right above this text. And the reason we can tell that is because I can see this text, find more app examples right here, right? It says find more app examples. So you can tell that that is what the outputs was. It's this whole section right above here. Um, and then we have two buttons here, right? Button one, so you can see this says dot button, and this says dot button. So we have two buttons, one's app examples, and then the other one is submit new request. So you can see right here, app examples and submit new request. So it kind of makes sense. You just kind of read it from top to bottom and you can start getting these context clues like that's clearly a button, that's clearly an output, that's clearly this. And then you can start customizing things. Um, and the nice thing is you can click app examples and then it takes you back to the GitHub repository. But I will also link that in the description so you, have, you can play around with and pull some flows and apps that go together and see how it works for yourself. But this is how you build a complete automation setup in Kestra using the flow as our backend, right? And then our app as our front end for the user. So the user interacts with this application that you built and then you process everything in the back end using the flows. And this is really great because it saves people time. It's saving you time. Having somebody go to an application to download data is much faster and easier than them pinging you on the side, hoping that you are available, hoping that you are gonna drop everything to go help them get this data. You can set up a custom application in Kestra and call it a day. So hopefully this gave you a better idea on how this new application feature in Kestra is used with a real day-to-day -day example. I will link below my previous video with Kestra and I dive a lot deeper into flows themselves. So if you wanna check that out, I will link it below. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time.